Welcome everyone, we are here at the Indian Pavilion, here at the Expo 2020. So let's discover the whole pavilion right now. Let's go, come with me. All right, it's a big pavilion, all right? Multiple floors. It's a, it's, it's a really big pavilion and it's got so many floors right now and we're gonna check everything right now. Come, let's go with me. With a big gate, uh, with a lot of uh, names on there. Yeah. yeah. So this is basically the big gate of the Indian Pavilion. And we have got the India written over here. Come with me. So when you come on to this side, we have got the main satellites launched by India in different years basically. But the main satellites that are launched by India. One of them is basically the Mangalyan. We talk, we space, we say this in Hindi, and one of them, this is the Mangalyan mission, or you can say the Mars Orbiter mission of India, where India launched their first satellite to the Mars. So basically, there are so many countries who have attempted, but unfortunately, they couldn't succeed in their first attempt. But India is one of the first countries to attempt and succeed in their first attempt itself. Why? Because they have applied a new technique, which is also known as the slingshot technique where they made these huge rotations around the Earth and eventually they entered the space of the Mars. So the total duration of this mission was around 9 months and the total cost was around $74 million. One of the best parts is that we have got a small orbiter in here which, is, which keeps orbiting around this and it sends all the necessary information right now to ISRO and we hope it will keep doing so for the next 10 years. So this is all about the Mars Orbiter mission of India. And, and what is it uh, doing around Mars? Is it's, it mapping it's or? sending all the necessary information which are required. They had a hope that this, this will help them make a living possible for the humans on the, on the Mars basically. And this is checking all the climate change and the, and the main climate change or the weather change that happens on the Mars. So this is and basically for that. How soon are Indian uh, astronauts going to land on Mars? Yeah, hopefully in the, in the, in the future, hopefully in 2025, 26, we're going to see the Indian astronaut that's, that's going to land soon. on the Mars. Uh, what rocket launched this satellite? This is uh, the PSLV. PSLV. Is that it one of those? Launched. Yeah, it is one of Let's those. Let's have a look yeah, sure. at the... So, these are the... The first Indian one. rockets. This is the PSLV that was launched to the Mars in 2013. So we have kept a small model, or you can say a demo model, of how the, the rockets that were launched by India. There's been already a lot of launches. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, rockets that have been launched, but these are the main uh, satellites that are launched by India in different years, basically. But these are the main satellites launched uh, by and India. What's the lift capacity uh, compared uh, to like a Falcon 9 or? Yeah. If you see this one, we have got two tons. It can carry two tons of weight. And uh, this has been successful in its first attempt itself. To, to low Earth orbit. Two yeah, tons, to, to right? orbit around the Mars. To orbit around ah, the Mars. Ah, to Mars? Yeah, to two the tons. Mars. To the Mars, yeah, two tons. To the That's Mars. a lot. Yeah, exactly. All right. So basically, there are so many countries who have attempted, but India is one of them who made history by clearing out in the first attempt itself. So this is one of the huge successes for India in terms of the Mars mission. And here, um, the GSLV MK2 Mark III. Mark III, it looks the, big. Yeah, this is to the Chandrayaan 2, the second satellite that, that was launched to the south pole of the moon, or you can say the darker side of the moon. As it is the darker side, India had a hope that they might find water on the other side. This is why they launched this satellite. And unfortunately, they couldn't land on the surface of the moon, but this is one of the most successful missions of India, basically. This was launched in 2019. How soon are uh, Indian astronauts gonna walk on the moon? Yeah, hopefully, as we have uh, talked about the Mars, we have got uh, some astronauts that are gonna go to the moon as well. Hopefully in 2023 or 24, hopefully. Is there a need to do international collaboration when this happens? Or India, India does one mission, China does another mission, USA does another mission? India has done a lot of collaborations with different countries. If you see this GSLV Mark III, or you can say the Chandrayaan II, this was collaborated with Russia and they have launched this uh, satellite in 2019. And hopefully, there are a lot more collaborations coming up with, uh, for, from India with different countries, and they're gonna launch different satellites. So it's launching from Baikonur? Yeah, it's, it's launching from India. It launches from India. from India, from the Andhra Pradesh, or we have got a launch site, which is also known as the Sri Harikota from Andhra Pradesh. That is the south side of the India. Nice. Do you show the, the moon lander? Uh, no, around we, here we, or we haven't got that how about those little satellites there those yeah those are the uh, satellites which are launched for the main resources of all of this 
Uh, so those are around the Earth? So these are uh, launched to the space in different ears basically and what, what is the best part is that we have got a touchpad over there where if you want to know when they were launched and why they were launched so we have got a touchpad with all the information of these satellites basically. And what do people see on this globe when they walk by here, this one? A lot of people they don't say anything, most of them take pictures with this. This is one of the most successful missions done by India in different years basically but these are the one of the most successful missions of India. Nice. Uh, this ancient Indian astronomy. This is about the astronomy of India. How they used to calculate everything through sun, through stars and through galaxies. How they found new galaxies. So basically this is all about the astronomy video of India. And the best part is we have got a headset over here where you can use this and then you will get to know all the information if you want to listen to it. So this is one of the best things. Uh, here are more satellites. Yeah. Uh, like life size, these are the same size as the one in space? No, no, these are just a small model we have kept because a lot of people they are curious to, to know the satellites so or to see the satellites. This is why we have kept small models of it where they can see and they'll get to know a, a 3D animation, video of a 3D animation models. So it's not doing. nanosats, it's actually yeah. kind of big. It is, in the reality, we have given scale as well where you can check the scale, the real size of these ah, satellites. 10 times this size. Yeah. 10 times here, 10 times, 10 times. Yeah. All right. Um, here, you, there's more interactive touch on uh, the chronicles. Uh, tap on the timelines to watch what's been happening. These are basically what has happened at ISRO, or you can say the ISRO, what has happened at Indian Space Research Organization. The main events that has happened at Indian Space Research Organization from 1962 until 2020. So we have got all the information in this touchpad where you can swipe and you can check any of the information what has happened in different years. So this is basically for that. Uh, so if you swipe all the way back yeah. to 1962? 1962 is when the company was founded by Vikram Sarabhai in 1962. So the formation of the company began in 1962 and it was formed into a, in, into a personal organization which was made by Vikram Sarabhai. Later on in 1975, it was turned into a government organization and then they launched their first satellite to the, uh, to the space basically which is also known as the Aryabhatta satellite from the Soviet Union. So this is basically about that. And what was this satellite doing? Uh, this is basically to capture the main events that is happening in the space or the, uh, the climate change or basically all about the space basically they want to know about everything. Yeah. So this is basically used for that. And uh, then a bunch of things happened through the 80s, 90s? Yeah, a lot of things has happened just like how I've told you about these satellites that were launched. We've got all the information in this because a lot of people they're curious to know about these information. So, so this is why we've got all the information in this and, basically. Uh, uh, if you go to much more recent times, 2020, yeah. just like how I told you As about things the, are going very fast right now. Yeah, exactly. Bunch of missions yeah, in one year. The main satellite, uh, these are not the main satellites, so you can say the satellites that are launched for the testing or the demonstration satellites or the demonstration rockets launched by India or uh, Indian Space Research Organization. So we've got everything in there. So, um, the, the India is sending their astronauts and their own rockets? Yeah, exactly. They're collaborating with a lot of other countries and they're going to send their astronauts soon. Right now they have sent just to the space, but they haven't so, uh, sent anyone to the moon or to the Mars. But they're going to do that in the future, hopefully soon we can see them. Soon maybe the ISS, the International Space Station, yeah, will yeah, be exactly. a way for Everything India to launch launched. there? Everything will be launched either from America or from India itself. So basically we, as an Indians, we hope everything will be launched from India itself. So this is one of the and most... Here is a very bright the little booth here yeah. with a, a bunch of different So basically we are talking about collaborations made by India. So these are basically all the collaborations made by India and their achievements. So India has done a lot of collaborations with Soviet Union, with Russia, with America, with Israel, with UAE. And they have launched a lot of uh, rockets and satellites. So we have got all the information in this basically. One of those main events is basically the 1981, the Apple satellite that was transported on a bullock by India. 
So basically, this is one of those main events that has happened at ISRO, and we have got all these achievements in this basically. It was launched from India. Yeah, it was launched from Soviet Union. Ah, from the Soviet Union. Yeah. Well, all right. Uh, so a lot of um, uh, young people in India are very excited about space. Yeah, exactly. There, uh, there are a lot of people that are excited about about this, and they're really getting into this. Hopefully. Uh, one of them might be our uh, recent astronauts. They're gonna get. They're gonna launch their astronaut to the space or to the Mars or the Moon. So Even further, maybe you're showing all the planets here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We have shown a lot of uh, planets, and uh, one of those main ones are the Moon and the Mars. And hopefully, we're gonna see the further ones as well. Nice. Is this the? This is the space, space suit. suit, which is uh, made by ISRO, and they're gonna help. Uh, this is basically a selfie point where you get into this and then you can take pictures with this basically so you can see the ISRO mark or the Indian nice. flag so has this flown in space yet no they're gonna fly this in the, in the they future, haven't tested basically. it already no, they haven't te uh, tested this right now okay. but hopefully in the future we're gonna see this uh, you know to be seen again in the future be, like hopefully this year, in 2025 or 26 hopefully 25, just 26. like how we told you about our astronauts they're gonna yeah. launch to the space or to the moon or the Mars so basically yeah. they're gonna use this uh, this suit basically and here is a presentation of the India to the moon. Uh, this is basically about the Chandrayaan-2, the second satellite that was launched by India to the south pole of the moon, or you can say the darker side of the moon. So as it was the darker side, India had a hope that they might find water on the other side. And this will eventually make a living possible for the humans on the moon. But unfortunately, this wasn't successful, but this was a collaboration made by Russia and hopefully, it's, uh, India is coming up with Chandrayaan-3, hopefully in 2022 or 23. And this time, we hope India will succeed in this. Uh, just a little bit on the landing that's missing or something yeah, exactly. like that? It consisted of three parts, the orbiter, the lander, and the rover. The rover was in the lander, but unfortunately, the lander was just 1.67 kilometers away from landing on the surface of the moon. But unfortunately, they lost connection and there were some problems with the soft landing uh, due to which the lander crashed. But they're going to try again. Hopefully, this time we, uh, hopefully this time we will and, succeed. And we can watch it live on, on YouTube? Yeah, exactly. A lot of people in India and the other countries, they've watched this live. And when we tell them about this, a lot of people, they have watched this live. So if you want to know about this, we have got the whole video where you can stand inside this and you'll get to know all the information about the South Pole. Uh, that the rocket that was launched to the south pole of the moon. So basically, we have got and the actually, whole. Actually, uh, it's not very expensive when India does uh, a launch to the moon yeah, exactly. compared to is, like uh, the the U.S. or the Chinese missions. Maybe it's like, yeah, just like how we have seen in the Mars mission, where India is the only country to build a cheapest or the most cost-effective satellite made by any country. Just, just in the Mars mission. Seventy-six million. Seventy-four million dollars. Seventy-four million dollars. Lesser than making a Hollywood movie. So as that was a huge success for India, this is also a huge success for India as this was also built in one of the most cheapest forms. So basically this, uh, the total spent was around 134 million, but this is still one of the huge successes for India. Uh, uh, you know, like uh, the expo is amazing, but I'm sure some of the pavilions cost more money. Yeah, exactly. One pavilion. So some of one them. of them is basically the Indian pavilion and we assure you that when you come in here, you're gonna enjoy the space side of the moon and then we have got the three floors which basically has the uh, historical buildings present in India then we have got all about the culture and all about the main events that has happened in India and basically the relations of India with different countries so basically nice. this and is all very about busy every day showing this to the whole world coming to the World Expo yeah exactly and what's going on over here is it this also is, your yeah talk about this? this is about the yoga nice uh, how many people uh, there are four people who keep performing yoga in here and the best part is, if you want to learn about the yoga, we have got a touchpad over there where you can learn all about this. So we have got demonstration videos where you can watch these demonstration videos. And then we have got different languages as well, where you can choose the language and then you can watch the video. So it even gets easier for you to understand the video. Uh, it's very important to master your body and, uh, yeah, and, exactly. and flex your really muscles correctly and everything. The flexibility of our, of our body. And it's one of the best exercises that are done in India and basically the other countries as well. So here, if you see, we have got the medical herbs and the yogic chakras, which are present in India. So these are basically the medical herbs, which are present in India. So all these you see right here, uh, 
the medical hubs present in India and we have got these benefits. So you can just read their benefits because we use this on a daily basis but we don't know their benefits. So this is why we've got all of them where you can check their benefits. There are many kind of like magical powers in plants and stuff that yeah, exactly. there uh, in Europe and USA uh, I guess maybe we don't think of it enough, right? Yeah, uh, as we you just take some of, drugs. Yeah, as you have heard about the Ayurveda, this is, these are all the Ayurvedic medical herbs present in India and these are basically used on a daily basis by Indians and a lot of other countries have been using this as well. So these are basically all the medical herbs present in India. We've got a video in here where you can watch the video and you'll get all the information on this. And there are experts in India who just keep improving their skills and yeah, exactly. using nature in a positive way and a, and a health to improve health. Yeah, exactly. There are a lot of uh, you know specialists in this. Yo uh, you, you can say the yoga, the medical herbs, the Ayurvedic herbs. So basically, they keep finding new herbs present in India and their benefits. So basically, one of them is the Ayurvedic yoga that a lot of people they do, and this is one of them. Uh, where where does yoga come from? Was it from India or no? Uh, there are a lot of uh, countries who have got their own yoga. One of them is India and China as well. But Indian in yoga, Thailand. yeah, Thailand as well. There are so many countries yeah. we've got a different yoga, but India, we've got the Indian yoga in here, where two people perform yoga every single day, and you can learn from them. So basically, this is all about the yoga and the medical herbs of Indian pavilion. Here we have got the live demonstrations of different herbs present in India, where you can, we've got an iPad where you can scan them, and then you will get to know their benefits. You just scan this and so then you will get some to augmented reality going yeah, exactly. on here. Exactly, augmented reality or you can say a 3D animation video of these benefits of different yoga herbs. So you watch nice. this and you will get to know their benefits. And what, is the tool, what does the Tulsi do? Tulsi. So we've got this as well where you can scan them and then you will get to know their benefits because a lot of people they're curious to know about their benefits so this is why we have created the augmented reality it will say Tulsi should have been president right now yeah uh, I'm joking uh, yeah okay yeah so basically a lot of people they don't know about this this is why we tell them the importance of these uh, herbs basically nice vitamins important for many things interesting uh, so we continue the tour yeah so this is not just the uh, whole pavilion that is going to end. We've got upstairs as well, where you yeah. go upstairs. This is one of the, uh, the first floor, basically, of the Indian pavilion, where you can come with me. So we have seen the yoga, uh, the yoga and the space section of the Indian pavilion. Then we are going to see the historical buildings present in Indian pavilion. So we've got all of them. One of them is the Taj Mahal. I'm sure you are familiar with the Taj Mahal. So we, will see, we are going to see that as well. So we. Just reach here and then we'll get see that as well. Nice. Uh, do you speak about every uh, floor or are you just downstairs, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we are so going to we'll show see. all about the culture, all yeah. about the historical oh. buildings present Big in Big screen here yeah, all with the reflection. Hey. So these are uh, cave paintings. This floor name is Endless Colors of India. All right. So in this case, uh, let me cut. Cinema. And here we're on the first floor. Hello. Hello, I'm Reema. Namaste. So welcome to the Indian Pavilion. This is the first floor. It's endless colors of India. So there are like 360 degree mirrors you can see in the wall. On the walls, they're presenting the art forms, textiles, even like dance and cultural festivals and everything. And here there's some monuments under World Heritage Site. So first monument is going to be Rani Ki Vav. So Rani Ki Vav is in Gujarat. Patan. It is also known as Tepel. In what it's Tepel, that is made by a queen in 11th century, Rani Udiyamati, for her husband, who came from Sri Lanka dynasty. This temple is also there in 100 rupees note of our Indian currency. So we will move to the next monument. So, uh, how much of it is preserved to this like, day? It's 11th century old temple, still available in Gujarat. The whole, all, everything we see yes, is still there? Yes, everything is still there. It is under UNESCO World Heritage Site. So we, all visitors are able to visit. And uh, it looks like it's yeah. dug down in yeah, the ground? Yeah, it's really deep, about 26 meters deep. 
and with all these like uh, so this is a well yeah this is a well to store water and these are like you can see when you go deep there is a temple inside there are like we in previous day there were 292 pillars among in this temple but now yeah. only 226 pillars are exist so we will move to the next monument nice so this is sun temple kunar it is in Odisha Puri, near the state of Jharkhand, north east side. So this temple Kunark is dedicated to Sun God Surya. Kunark is Sanskrit word. Kunark Kona means corner, earth means sun. So Kunark is also made by a king named Krishna Devaraya, who came from Ganga dynasty. This temple is dedicated to Sun God. So it shows us the timing. The, the king have designed this temple like a like chariot because it has seven horses and twelve pairs of wheels. 7 horses represent 7 days in a week and 12 pairs of wheels represent 12 months in a year. Each wheel represents 24 strokes, it means 24 hours in a day. Thank you. So we'll move to the next monument. Um, on the big screens, you keep having all kinds of yeah, different see, uh, things happening. The camera, you see that like, Kathak is going on, the, like the Kathak form. So this is the Kathakali, the Indian dance forms. Dif there are different types of dance forms in India. So this is Sri Kashi Vishwanath Temple. It's in Uttar Pradesh Varanasi. This temple is an 18th century old temple, also known as Golden Temple. Because in 18th century, Maharaja Ranjit Singh ordered the queen to cover the dome with the gold. So this two dome is about 5.3 carat gold. Now they're extending this temple. So within 4-5 months, it is going to be ready. This temple is dedicated to one of the famous god Lord Shiva. And is also one of the famous Hindu's temple. And it is located on the western side of the Holy River Gangas. This temple receives 3,000 visitors every single day and it's under UNESCO World Heritage Site. And if you think about a festival like Diwali, then there are like triple visitors available. Thank you. So we'll move to the next one. So as you see here, it's Taj Mahal, the seven wonder of the world. Taj Mahal was built in 17th century by Shah Jahan for his wife Mumtaz Mahal. This symbolizes love. It was built in 17th century and it was used by white marbles. And white marbles are used in such a way that during different daytime, the light reflects and looks very beautiful. This is located on the river bank of Yamuna and the Yamuna river is connected to this fountain. So this, this also symbolizes love. When you go inside the Taj Mahal, you're going to see Shah Jahan and Mumtaz graveyard side by side. You see the four pillars around the Taj Mahal, they're not straight because they're still outwards. Like if there's any serious disaster or something, it does not destroy the main Taj Mahal inside one. So we will move to the next one. So this is Stone Chariot Hampi. It is in Karnataka. This is located between the Vijayavata Temple in Karnataka. This temple was built in 16th century by a king who came from Vijayanagar dynasty. This temple is also there in 50 rupees note of an Indian currency. During 16th century, the dome was there. As the time got passed, the dome got vanished. No one knows where the dome is actually located. But still, researchers are going to research on it. This temple has seven minor pillars around this temple. When you ring them, you are going to hear musical sound like Sari Gapa. As in the name sound chariot, it has the wheels. So in previous year, because of the local visitors, one of the wheels got displaced from its position. So that's why the government has stopped the visitor to touch the wheel. So now it's not allowed to touch. It is under UNESCO World Health Site. Thank you. And where do visitors go from there? Yes. So we will go to the second floor. Yeah? Yes. And you can talk about this also. Uh, we will find your friend up there. Um, Second and we, I can't talk. we go up there. Maybe you can introduce us to the... Yes, so we'll go to the 
second floor. It's about never-ending opportunities of India. It's going to show you the past, present and future of India. What is the transformation have gone from past to the future? It's a, it's a very big pavilion with a lot of things happening. Yeah. All right, let's see if one of your colleagues will be ready to speak with us. So welcome. Namaste and welcome to the technology and innovations floor of the India Pavilion. Here, here we are showing a video which is a transformation about India from the time of its freedom till date, that is from the 1940s to the 2020s how India transformated from a scattered state into a union with all different progresses like to becoming the green revolution, the milk revolution and all. So here we are showing it decade wise that is from 1940s then the 1950s progression then even we are describing about the underground nuclear test that was conducted in the 1970s and on these walls you see several different screens. These screens represent the different projects that were undertaken in these 75 years and their progresses. Uh, so it's a lot to do with digital transformation? That's correct. Connecting everybody to the Connect internet? Connecting everybody, connecting the rural to the cities, to the metropolitan cities. Here we are showing a small video about a transformation of how a forest tribal village was uh, developed and transformed. On the wall you see the new India. This wall shows you new India, the new opportunities that are coming up with all the departments that are under promotion of ministry and internal trades. Um, so, uh, India is manufacturing a lot of things. That's correct. And not only for India, but for the whole world. That's exactly right. And just more and more in the future, like yes, all these cars. Yes, we will definitely see those things and the sectors that, as you said, we are manufacturing things for India as well as the world. We will see that in the second part of the floor. So, let's move towards that. Here on this screen, you see the Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade. These are the sectors which have not been promoted or not established yet. They are still under progress. So if you click on any of the sectors, it will display on the screen giving the information of that particular sector. Uh, I'm checking out the telecom, for example. I heard that in the last few years, um, there's been some uh, promotions done by some of the companies that do the telecom in India That's to really bring very affordable, very fast internet to everybody. Very fast internet, very affordable internet. Everybody can afford it. Yes. We have several plans from the lowest to the maximum. That is, even a common man can get those facilities available. 4G. Yes, 4G. Now we are also getting 5G. But it's not only the cities, but I guess the cities have much more than the villages, right? That's correct. Cities but are much more than villages. But uh, I would like to tell you one more thing. The people from the villages are migrating to cities for job, new opportunities, as I told you. Here we go ahead. There you see an animal and a logo that says make in india well the animal which you see is a lion and that is the logo for make in india initiative which is a government initiative to manufacture goods inside the country manufacturing goods means every part would be manufactured in india to the whole product plus this initiative 
will give a boost to the startups and the small scale industries. Plus, this would create opportunities and employment to the people in the country. Uh, As, can you, which are the cities where there's a lot of manufacturing happening? Well, there are different cities like in uh, Pune, if you see, there are several uh, infrastructures that are going on. We have Nagpur, which is famous for oranges, fruits. There are several different cities that will manufacture these things. And, uh, like Bangalore is more doing the software or also most, manufacturing? Yes, correct. Bangalore would more be on the software industry. Then you have Chennai, wherein your chips and the credit cards, the master cards, the debit cards which we use are manufactured there. But uh, it's not so easy to make chipsets, right? Uh, like, uh, like Taiwan and maybe also China has some yes. kind of, and Korea. Korea they have some Japan technology also. that's hard to get access. Like even the U.S. have nothing for, for to do right. make them. But as you know, in the entire world, there are Indians who are, you know, uh, working for such kind of companies that are software developing countries or the hardware companies. So we have that manpower. We have that technology available. It's just a boost that the people need, and you can see up. These are the sectors that are focused under the Make in India project. Mining renewable energy. Right. And if you'll ask me why we selected Lion as the logo, I would like to tell you there are two reasons. One, because Lion is the emblem of the Indian constitution. Second, since Lion is called the king of the jungle and India is aiming to become the king of startups, that's why we selected Lion as the logo. And the wheels that you see that are continuously moving, those are inspiration from the Ashoka Chakra on the Indian flag, which has 24 strokes, which means you should work 24 hours towards progress and become successful. So hard work, like uh, for example, when we look at China, they achieved what they've done by working very hard for many years, right? Yes, they have achieved working very hard. They have boosted their small scale industries. That's why I said Make in India will help and boost the small scale industries and the startup industries. If, for example, anyone is planning to start a business, government will definitely help them with all kinds of facilities from finance to the manpower. After so, so how does the government help startups? They will, like for example, there will be some people who have just graduated. Uh, let's take an example of an engineer, a mechanical engineer. He wants to start his own workshop or something, but he doesn't have the finance. And there will be institutions who will not finance you unless you have any background or a backup. But the government organizations will give you on certain basis terms and conditions and the finance, the help, uh, even if, if you want to uh, develop something, they will help you with that as well. And making it easy to pay taxes and Correct. not pay too much taxes they will maybe? Have, they will have a lot of facilities available. They, uh, it could be possible that their taxes might be reduced since they are helping. Yeah. That's correct. That is what we call New India. And then above you see the smart city model. This is basically a general smart city structure. This was a small competition held across the country where in different states had to nominate the upcoming infrastructurally developing cities. And there were 98 nominations under this project. These cities will go under the transformation one by one in the phases. So out of 98 cities, there have 20 cities that have been selected in the first round to undergo the transformation. Let me tell you what exactly we mean by smart city. Smart city is a well-organized, well-planned, well-connected city with updated health and educational facilities, plus well-planned road, use of solar energy, reducing uh, pollution. What are, you uh, what are you thinking in terms of traffic? Uh, because that's sometimes right, there's many I cars said, well, and many... Well-planned roads, we would have the flyovers made. It's, uh, 
as i said like we have al already started the monorail projects we have the metros in place i like the the boring company from elon musk with all the tunnels i wish somebody would just adopt that idea well the tun tunnels come under the government sector so it would be the government that would uh, up, uh, you know update the tunnels they will uh, restructure those tunnels once again all right and further we move on on this wall you see the world map on top you see a title that says vasudeva kutumbam that means the world is one family here we are trying to display the foreign affairs and the friendships built by the pri indian prime minister with the nations across All right. So uh, he's been busy uh, trying to improve India in all sorts of ways Correct. over the last he bunch of years. He has been building relationship with the idea of New India, which I just explained to you, so that the world also knows what progress we are making. And uh, hopefully, India is getting good deals out of all these uh, partnerships, right? Like, uh, right. hopefully, there is uh, a lot to win for India, and that it's uh, these win -win. it's a win-win position for both of the countries. And here, you see, as the title suggests, business environment between India and UAE trade relation. This video will give you a detailed information about India and UAE since 3000 BC. Uh, that's 5000 years ago. That's correct. It's not only economical or financial but even the defense affairs what are going on between India and UAE is all explained in detail in this video. India is not so far. It's not too far from here, right? No, it's not that far from here. It's just one sea away. Can you just build a pipeline? It's a gulf. That's correct. Can it be a pipeline from here to there? Possible. That could be, but that would be underwater. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, from some of the other countries, that has a lot of uh, India would like to have access to natural gas and correct. stuff like that, right? Yes. Right. Because um, from UAE, Bombay is the closest airport, wherein you reach within three hours. That's like uh, that's closer than Europe. Exactly. Yeah, Europe is like five hours. Or five something. hours. Yeah. All right. Ah, nice. So that's a nice big floor, and there's even meeting rooms over there, or? Ah, uh, no, that's the exit for the elevators. Ah, exit. But what's up there? Even more. Ah, uh, th those are just the corporate floor, wherein we have different companies from India. Yeah. That uh, have their projects projected. Let's let's go up and see if sure. some of them want to talk on video. Uh, so I see from here there's Tata. Yes, uh, which is you will making see a Tata, lot of cars. You will see Adani. You will see Hindustan Unilever. You will see Byju's, Dreamsport, Hinduja Group. All right, let's have a look. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Welcome to the third floor. Now, this is the corporate floor where you have different companies from India. which are projecting their upcoming projects the first company we see is vedanta vedanta is transforming elements for a better tomorrow is the logo that means they are helping with the educational facilities in the rural areas looking up to people if they are able, they are getting all kinds of facilities for them the next we see tata group as we all know tata is one of the biggest companies in india so they are projecting their new projects in the steel industry in the communication industry and the airline industry also they even building airplanes yes uh, they are partners with air vistara ah air bus okay uh, it says uh, yes and million consumers and taj is one of the brands of tatas all right So the next we come to Hindustan Unilever which is a very famous brand in India uh, with the main brand would be the toothpaste Colgate which is made under the Hindustan Unilever project That's my favorite And so the 
Unilever is just like uh, billions and billions of products being sold, right? Yes, they have many products, all household products, what we can think of. All right. And next is the Adani Group. Well, we all know their uh, aim is growth with goodness. So Adani is also pro projecting their projects in the development of rural areas with schools, colleges, in energy and petroleum industry. And this is Baiju's. Baiju's is basically an educational app for children in school, high schools and colleges. Right. Education is a big challenge uh, for a country with so many people, right? That's and correct. hopefully you're, you're things are moving to positive things, right? Yes. Keeping, Fast? Yes. Keeping in mind the population of the country and the new generation, the young generation that's coming up. Since now we all know, past two years, the clo we don't have offline classes. It's all online. So Baiju surely helps them to understand in a better way. Online, all yes. right. Uh, but hopefully online in a positive way, not just uh, uh, because of some kind of pandemic or something. No, no, no. Uh, it's definitely so, uh, even uh, afterwards, later also, when the yeah. offline classes will start, students can access this. Yeah. And uh, here we come to the Hinduja group. Here they are projecting their project about water purification and providing water to especially to those people who are unable to get clean water, drinking water. Uh, it's a very big challenge to get clean water and desalinate water and clean water. Exactly, especially in the rural areas where you don't have proper storage facilities for water. And here is Larson and Tubro that we all know is very famous for their infrastructure. Is it a Danish guy, Larsen? Yes. All right. Partner with the Indian, Indian. companies. Correct. I mean, they're together. They're making That's company. That's right. And this is a very famous social app, Facebook. I, I saw that Facebook is even giving like free internet as long as you only use Facebook or something yes, like that. We have uh, special internet packs wherein you can use social media apps on it. So Facebook is one of them. So that means. As far as I understand, they are they're promote they're Promot sponsoring some of the network, right? Correct. They must they're sponsoring be. some of the networks so that there is connectivity amongst people. As you know, the population of India is too much. All right, all right, that's great. And next is Reliance Industries Limited. We all know Reliance is a, one of the famous industries in telecommunication, in energy, and also in the supermarkets where we have Reliance Fresh and Healthcare also. All right. All right. Thanks, thanks a lot for, for showing all this. Thank you uh, so much. My name is Pooja and I will sign off for the day. And uh, so the expo is um, hopefully bringing many new connections. People yes, are definitely. connecting there, with India. There are opportunities in every country. So people from different countries can travel for opportunities, for work purpose, for education, and even migrate to those countries. And then come back or do projects that benefit India even if they exactly. don't come back. There's all kinds of ways the future will be bright for hopefully for everybody. Correct. Right. Thank you.